Welcome back. Members of the public are airing their views on the appeal by St. Lucia's government for people to open up their homes to Vincentian evacuees given the volcanic eruptions at La Soufre volcano. Here's what they had to say. Unfortunately, I really cannot. If I could, I would have. I have no space. I have a two-bedroom apartment. And that's it. So I, I really cannot accommodate anybody. Let me put it that way. Generally speaking, I agree. But personally, I cannot. Because my home could accommodate only me and my children. But I agree who can. I agree 100% of you who can afford it. Who can who have the space to do so, but I personally cannot. I I have a space I could take in somebody, you know. But the person have to, after coming in the country, acquire get a job and start help me pay in the bill, you know. But for now I could take them just so, but in the future the person will have to just start help me pay in the bills. So that that would be a win and a, and, a, and a win win for me and, and the person. Appeal to all solutions open our bars of compassion and mercy to the same instant tomorrow's hours. Mm -hmm. But my only problem is I have a weather problem at Talisman, but I will know once I rectified, I have to talk to my friends in St. Vincent, I'm willing to house a family or two. I'm able, who can house them, give them food or water. I'm very able, I'm encouraging the solutions to take a family. Bro. You, the humane thing to do right now because it's a, a situation whereby our neighbors, our brothers need some kind of assistance, but unfortunately I'm not in that position where I could have, but then and encouraging persons who are in a better position to house them, they can go ahead and do it as long as they follow all of the rules and guidelines that are necessary. But I think it's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. I want two of them to put inside by me. Yeah, I have a big house there, and it's only three of us alone are living there, and I need a female or two females to come there. Yeah, if I have, a partner, yeah, I have a partner mine there. If I see him, of course I go always put that man in. Mm. But I can free him, I have his number. Mm. Yeah, I'm willing to do it. Because mm -hmm. it's helped me too, so you have to help me. Yes, it would be nice. But, for me personally, I don't think I can live with any and anybody. Mm -hmm. Understand? So, it would have to be like somebody who have experienced before, Jesus you know, like Jesus I know or something like that. But, it would be a nice thing to do, man. So, but, but I, I, I cannot accommodate anybody right now. The U.S., South Africa, and the European Union will temporarily stop the rollout of the Johnson & Johnson COVID jam after reports of rare blood clotting. Six cases were detected in more than 6.8 million doses of the vaccine. That's according to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA. Johnson & Johnson has paused its rollout in the EU, which started this week. It follows similar cases after doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine, which prompted curbs to its use. The FDA said it was recommending the temporary pause out of an abundance of caution. It confirmed that one patient died from blood clotting complications and another is in critical condition. All six cases were in women aged 18 to 48, with symptoms appearing 6 to 13 days after vaccination. Following the advice, all federal sites in the U.S. have stopped using the vaccine until further investigations into its safety are completed. State and private contractors are expected to follow suit. The U.S. has by far the most confirmed cases of COVID-19, more than 31 million, with more than 562,000 deaths, another world high. Government's medium-term goal of making health care universally accessible, affordable, equitable, and sustainable, also of the highest international standards for citizens, is one that it says it will continue to pursue with much urgency. In 2019, government embarked on a medium-term development plan which would focus on six key areas to achieve sustainable and inclusive growth by 2022. One of those areas was that of healthcare, with a focus on affordable access to quality healthcare. With the onset of COVID-19 and the burden placed on the island's healthcare system, the need to enhance the infrastructure is even greater. During Chastney's budget address for the year 2021-2022 on Tuesday, Shastney outlined the gains which will be made during this fiscal year. OKU Hospital will be fully transitioned and the St. Jude Hospital will be completed. Residents of Ansari and Miku 
and their respective environs will finally be able to access better quality and increased range of services with the opening of their wellness centers. Work on the construction of the Denry Polyclinic and the Sufer Hospital will gather pace. Mr. Speaker, this administration has ensured that our citizens from the north, south, and the west of this nation have top quality health care facilities. We're almost at the stage where a network of public health facilities will be located within close proximity, no more than three miles to our people, wherever they live and work. The medium-term development plan entailed the design and implementation of a national health insurance, strengthening of primary and public health, and the full commissioning of the national hospitals in their new locations. Chastney says that government will continue to ensure that the country has a cadre of healthcare personnel with the requisite capacity and skill set to facilitate delivery of world-class services. While we push all of these important initiatives, we recognize the need for our citizens to access quality health care services that is affordable. The relevance and the urgency of instituting the national health insurance cannot be overstated. Mr. Speaker, we have conducted extensive consultations with all relevant stakeholders on the subject, ranging from the basket of services to the appropriate financing modality and operational and administrative options. The time is now. We have to bite the bullet, Mr. Speaker. With the World Bank's support, it is our, commit, our intention to operationalize our national health insurance program before the end of this fiscal year. The medium-term development plan also sought to pursue the implementation of a quality assurance framework. For the Hot 7 News, Nisha Charles reporting. Stay with us. There's more news after the break.